Oh man, look how smooth this thing is. It's like a butter running down a silk dress. Are you sure this is not a MacBook? Well, hello everybody. Welcome to my review of the new Asus Swift 16 for video editing and comparison to Asus G14, one of the most popular gaming slash video editing laptop. I have to change the comparison of ultra thin laptop to a gaming one as in cheap enough. It must have at least a little, or you wouldn't have clicked on this nonsensical comparison video, right? Before we start, I want to make clear that this is not a comprehensive review of the laptop. It is specific to video editing, not a general review. Others, like Tom's hardware, did a more general review, so feel free to go and check them out. I put the links to them below in the description section. So why use an ultralight laptop for video editing? Well, you don't buy ultralight laptops specifically for video editing, obviously. But you could be in the market for an ultralight laptop and happen to need to do some video work on the side. And that was the situation I was in. That's why I was looking at MacBook Air 15. Then the new Ryzen processor with a powerful iGPU intrigued me. 7840U processor in particular has some resemblance to Apple's M1. It doesn't have the unified memory like M1, but the iGPU with 12 cores was somewhat comparable. Really perform as well as MacBook at half the price when it comes to video editing? I wanted to find out. I know AMD has been bad with S264-265 coded, but I was hoping that AV1 that they were promoting would work as well as MacBook. So let's get that comparison out of the way first, shall we? MacBook Air 15, by the way, has M2 chip, which is supposed to be about 30% faster than M1. So the relevant specs and the performance numbers from the laptop magazine's test. The handbrake transcode time suggests that the Acer outperforms the MacBook by about 20% for exporting. As for the playback, MacBook obviously is better in H.264, but Acer matches MacBook in smoothness in AV1 format. So for video editing, they will match almost evenly, at least in AV1 format. But considering things like price, display, and number of ports, Acer Swift A16 was the winner for me. But if you rather work with H.264, or if the battery life is important to you, you will make a different choice, of course. So I went out and bought Acer Swift A16 when Best Buy had it on sale for $9.99. When I first tried to, AV1 didn't work well. Clips would become hazy when I add them to DaVinci's media form. And some clips were stutter when I played backward. Then I updated the machine with the new AMD driver, and that fixed the AV1 problems. But the driver introduced a new problem of degrading the performance. The thermal swelling was so bad, the CPU would go down to 0.53 GHz when it's warm. It was unusable without an AC. That's when I said, I'll flip it and then went out and bought G14. That's how I ended up with both H16 and G14. And about a week ago, AMD released a new driver, 2381, and fixed the performance problem. The CPU now stays at 1.39 GHz at the minimum. Now, let's compare some numbers. First, here's the spec comparison. The performance difference between 7840U and 7940HS is only about 15%. But G14 is two to three times faster when exporting video, as we shall see later, because it has powerful RTX 4060 GPU. Swift S16 is not as powerful, but it's a well packaged machine with fast memory, fast disk, and best of all, a gorgeous 16 inch OLED display. Some people wave over G14's micro LED, but in reality, it's no match to OLED display. That's probably why Apple is moving away from micro LED to OLED. And just look how much real estate this laptop has. I can fully expand the preview windows and still have enough room for several tracks on the timeline, thanks to 16 by 10 aspect ratio. You won't need an external monitor with this screen. 
G14 is on the other hand. It's not only smaller, but I can't fully explain the preview windows because that squeezes out the timeline too much. Now, here are the PG Bench scores for DaVinci Resolve. As you can see, there's no real comparison when it comes to performance. G14 wipes the floor with H16. That's expected. G14 is purpose built for gaming, while S16 is built for mobility. G14 score, by the way, may go over 2000 if you add a stick of 16 gig memory to it. And finally, here's the export time. Again, there's no comparison. G14's export is several times faster in both formats. Strangely enough, though, G14 was outperformed by the Acer when RTX 4060 was disabled. That's probably because Swift S16 has fast dual channel memory, whereas G14 only has slower single channel. Again, this can be easily fixed by adding a 16 gig memory stick to G14. So, G14 certainly has the raw power, but do we really need that much power for video editing, especially for casual users? The power only speeds up the export process, but it doesn't add much to smooth playback. It's the hardware core, not the raw power, that makes the real difference there. And I would argue that smooth playback, both forward and backward, is more important. Exporting is something you do once at the end, but you could spend several days editing. Sure, you could improve the playback by reducing the resolution, but you can't beat the pleasure of editing in full resolution on a larger 4K screen. Meanwhile, the export time of Swift S16 is still acceptable. It beats MacBook Air 15 after all. The biggest problem is the initial transcoding of H.264 to AB1. It takes about the same time as the length of the video, which could mean several hours to convert a 128GB card to AB1. But you could batch process overnight, and AB1 clips will be ready for you in the morning. It's an extra step for sure, but it's doable. I have a transcript project in DaVinci that I add all my clips on the SD card into and then export them out to my hard disk as individual AV1 clips. That way I'm transcoding and copying clips from my SD card at the same time. So in summary, Acer Swift A16 is a very viable option for casual video editing as long as you are willing to work with AV1 format rather than the native H.264 that your camera spits out. It will bring you a very pleasant editing experience in full resolution. And its gorgeous display and the lightweight are just addictive. You should certainly consider it as an alternative to more expensive MacBook Air 15 or higher powered gaming machines. I've done a few projects with it by now, and it's been a real pleasure. I've been finding myself looking forward to coming back to it while shooting my video in the wilderness. If you are planning to do larger projects, however, I will wait for the 32 gig version of this machine. DaVinci temporarily grabs huge amount of memory when initially loading clips, and that ends up with a large number of page faults. With about 6 gigs allocated to internal graphics, there isn't much room for larger projects with hundreds of clips. Even though page faults don't affect the performance in any way at all, large number of page faults aren't supposed to be a good thing. Well, thanks for watching, and I hope this video was of some help to you. If you were on the market for an ultra portable laptop that you could also edit video on. If not, I hope it was at least interesting. Till next time, take care.